Resist, uh, as the subtitle tells us eloquently, it is a soiter game about the Spanish Maquis and the battle against Franco. So you, the player, will control groups of rebels, of insurgents, and will, you will try to complete different missions that relate to your struggle against fascism in Spain back in the day. So, Soiter game only, and it's a card game. Everything is handled through cards. Your job will be to complete a number of missions. Each mission uh, has a value that indicates how many enemy cards are guarding it. Then you have a defense value, which is what you're trying to produce with your cards. If you're able to produce that amount of points or higher when trying to defeat a mission, you complete the mission. The mission is discarded and you score that amount of points and then you replenish it with another one with another one from the deck. However, it may be that when all is said and done you fail to produce that amount of points, in which case the mission instead of being defeated is flipped face down and it's left there. So first you're getting a little closer to losing the game and also now you have fewer missions to choose from because in the standard game, unless you fail a mission, you um, you will have four to choose from. And you'll set up a deck in a specific way with era one, in era two, and era three with different so phases of the Civil War being represented with different actions and different missions. Um, the idea is that uh, you will lose the game if you fail to defeat two missions. So you choose you choose a mission, you choose missions, and you fail to defeat two of them during the game, you lose the game. Also, you have civilians that unfortunately are gonna get caught or may get caught in the crossfire. There may be game effects that will force you to discard the civilian card, then you look at the value of the civilian card, and those are casualties, sadly. And if you accrue five or more casualties, that's another way in which you lose the game. Too many civilians are killed, I guess, you lose the support of the civilian population, which of course is also the crucial in insurgent operations. You win the game, well, that's interesting. You win the game if you don't lose it based on those conditions that I explain, but then it'll be up to you to choose when to stop the game. Now, if you complete every mission in the deck, then you also win the game. Otherwise, you choose when it's when it's enough. It's a uh, this game has some really nice touches about, you know, the way it represents insurgent operations, and I think this is one because you're not going to win the war. That was never the point. That was never in the cards that a bunch of insurgents would just win the big war. You are doing your your part to show what is right. And so there isn't like, well, if you defeat all 10 missions, you get an epic victory. But if you don't, well, you decide when you want to stop the game. If you think next round you're going to lose. And then you count victory points. And I like that if you do that, there is no losing. There is no losing the game. You had wars come to wars, it's it's a draw. I like that very much because we got civilians and trained civilians. They could stay home and mind their own business. They could be on the side of evil, but they decide to put their lives on the line um, to be uh, insurgents and to resist. I think it's a nice touch that for something of this kind is not really a loss. Although, of course, it can be pretty tragic. So... As for the game itself, again, we're going to have a line of four missions, each with a number of defenders. Then we're going to have insurgent cards that are the ones that we use to uh, play the game. And they represent uh, insurgents in two flavors, in two way, in two versions. Because you can play them as hidden, in which case you only look at the left car side of the card, resolving whatever effect it is and contributing that amount of points against the defense of the mission. Or you can play them as revealed. They take a big risk, they know they're not going to make it back home, but they give a big contribution to the cause. So the re reveal side is usually stronger and more powerful, but that means that after you play a card for its revealed value, it goes to a discard pile, as opposed to going back to your main pile. So this is not really a game of deck building, but it's a game of deck management, because sometimes you will need to lose cards, and you know that's the case, and then maybe you'll be able to get new cards in the recruit deck 
attack. And then there are these guys, spies, that have infiltrated the organization, and what they do is they clog your hand, they clog your deck, they make your hand of cards less effective. And so the play area where you're going to play the, your cards, so that's why there's a big empty area here in the middle of the shot, because this is the main play area when you will play your cards. The ones that you play as hidden, you're going to place them closer to the stack as a reminder, and the other ones closer here, the revealed ones, so these will be discarded and these will go to the discard pile to be reshuffled into your uh, card deck later. And here are some more cards so you can see the kind of effects that they have, and there are two kinds of effects, plan effects and attack effects. Some cards, you may be able to play a card to trigger that effect in either of them, but all cards can be played in all effects, in all phases, and those are the two main phases, the plan and the attack. Matter of fact, so a turn starts with a planning phase in which you can play card for their plan value. And let's assume I decide to do that. I simply play a card and I do what it says. In this case, I flip all enemies at one mission face up. Suppose I wanna go for this mission, then I decide that that's the effect that we're gonna do. And so I can play cards for that effect there. After that, it's time to choose a mission. I have to choose one of the missions and suppose just for the sake of it that I decided to uh, take on that mission. At that point I play cards for the attack value and again hidden or revealed and for, sorry for the attack effect. The value is always there whether the effect applies or not. So if, for example I was playing this card, uh, a card with, uh, with no attack effect during the attack phase I still get the number there which may be not particularly good. So once I played cards during the attack phase, and maybe cards will allow me to get more cards out of there, manipulate things in a different way, eliminate a card. After that, uh, maybe my display will look a little bit like this, between hidden and revealed. I count how many points of attack I was able to produce, depending again on the card and the side that I'm using. And then I have a number, say I have a total of 10 attack points there, and I'm gonna use it to defeat any combination of mission and possibly also enemy cards. That's something that wasn't obvious to me at the, as I was reading the rule book. The enemies associated with a mission, you do not have to defeat them unless they have the defend keyword. Then you must, oh sorry, uh, there are other ones, it's not this gun, but there are other defend uh, guys that will protect the mission. This one, what it does, it protects the other enemies. Because unless somebody's protecting the mission, then uh, you can just destroy the mission. Suppose I have five, then I destroy the mission, I'm good, hooray, so I'm okay now, right? Not so, because all of the cards that have the survive effect that are still there after the mission has been defeated will apply, and these are all negative effects. You can, you may have to add a new spell to your discard pile, shuffle only the Maquis in play and remove one, and they may uh, kill civilians, so it's all, it's all bad stuff. So there's a very, very, very interesting game mechanic here of damage mitigation, and that's really the heart of the game to me. It has this very powerful theme, very powerful topic, and, but when it comes to the mechanics is hand management and harm reduction, basically. Because, uh, well, maybe I have enough uh, to take or to destroy all the enemies in this one, no negative effect. But chances are those are really good hands and maybe they don't have uh, equally good hands for the next time. So at some point you'll have to choose. You all will always, usually, almost always want to destroy the mission. Although again, you may choose in some exceptional circumstances, well, we're going to lose this mission because we really need to prevent the counter guerrilla from killing civilians, things like that. But in general, you will want to defeat the mission and then you see what you can eliminate from that, what kind of effects you can eliminate and which ones you will have to accept. And that's the, the general idea. So suppose the mission is defeated, we resolve the survive effect of the surviving enemies, they are discarded, and then we set up a new mission there. 
a new mission there and we draw the appropriate number of enemy cards so this would be five and then we play another round in which again first we play cards for their um, for their plan effect if any then we choose a mission then we play cards for the attack effect if any we total the attack power of the cards depending on how they were played and then we see what happens there very very fun very interesting mechanic there also you can choose to play the game uh, in, a, in a card drafting version again it's a solitaire but basically you can choose the cards if you wanted to go as you draw cards you can choose if they go to one pile rather than another so there's an interesting mini game there as you try to set up the best possible game uh, one thing about the production that you may have noticed the back of the cards uh, especially the the McKee cards and the enemy cards they come in two versions one is slightly darker and this one is slightly lighter I don't think you can see very well here but in in real life here yes I can and this one is more noticeable it doesn't affect the gameplay at all it doesn't affect the gameplay at all because I there are just enough characters that know which one is this one it just so happens luckily enough it was an oversight three spies or have a dark background and three have the light background I guess there are cases in which you can try to game it a little bit but why would you it's a sweater game you want to enjoy it so ignore the back of the cards and again this is an early copy by the time um, it reaches it hits the stores probably they will have fixed it I don't think it's a feature I think it's a bug because there's no advantage in this but again even as a bug it did not prevent me from enjoying the game at all Resist is a remarkable game. It has smooth and fun mechanics, it has a fascinating topic, and it treats it with really remarkable sensitivity and accuracy. Starting for the mechanics, they are so simple, but yet they flow so well. You have a hand of cards, uh, which may be of varying size, depending on whether you have spies or not, which kind of um, abilities you're using. But then you have the simple and yet very rich decision that you have to make about each and every card, which is are you going to play it as revealed or as hidden, as a one-time big effect or, or a smaller effect that you can use multiple times. And of course, that can have a huge impact on your deck because on one hand, you are saving every person that you have, you're all keeping them in the hidden pile, you're even getting new things, but then you may get a little bit into that paradox of deck building when you have a lot of great cards and they don't come out as often. But of course, if you thin out your deck too much by sacrificing your agents, that's a big problem also. You're going to start having a lot more spies and agents, then probably you're not going to be able to do very well. So, the element of managing the deck and choosing how each card is used to me, it's remarkable. It's remarkable because it manages to give you great depth at, with such a simple idea because you have a, many different effects, each character behaves differently and this is also very powerful for the message that each insurgent, uh, each person fighting against fascism here is a unique individual with unique personalities, abilities, capabilities, motivations the individuality of these uh, common day heroes come out very well but again, the idea is that you have a range of unique effects, which is very resonant with modern hobby culture, and sometimes it can feel almost overwhelming when you have to deal with all these things, but you're going to have only a small number of them uh, to think about every turn, and about and for each of them you have to make just one decision, which side it goes. So you really have a nice balance between an incredibly simple core and around it a huge range of unique effects to play with. When it comes to allocating your resources, very important also because, well, you probably have to complete the mission, uh, but then you have to decide which of those other uh, enemies are going to survive and you're going to have to take that effect, uh, negative effect, and which ones you want to remove from the game. So many interesting decisions packed within such a lean core of rules. I'm really impressed. Just again, great design here. The topic, as I said, is very interesting, is very powerful, and when, when I had mentioned the sensitivity that, uh, that the game shows, that to me is also something that makes this game uh, so charming, because 
so charming but also you know so deep so so sad in a sense there is a powerful emotional resonance there's a paradox if you want that if we play a game about the eastern front in world war ii you're maneuvering these units that represent millions of men many of whom will not make it back home and it feels so abstract because our mind struggles to conceptualize the, these these big numbers and again to see the individual humanity of each of these but this one is at the individual level it's it is at the human level when you flip a card and you see a civilian that is getting killed that's a powerful experience and you realize that you're insurgents Maybe they could have avoided that, or maybe it was impossible. Either way, it feels tragic. Either way, it feels heavy. I think that it was a really nice, but also nice in a specific way, mind you, uh, to include the death of the civilians. Um, I come from a small village on the Italian Alps where, uh, during the, the, the German occupation in World War II, 30 civilians were killed in retaliation because the insurgents had killed three Germans. That is part of the town's lore. There is a small square named after these 30 martyrs. So it's a powerful, it's a powerful thing. And to me, it's powerful that this game uh, goes there and includes that very unpleasant, very painful element too. So you have gaming that does... Uh, to me, the best that gaming can do. It's a game that is fun to play and it makes you think about important things, about relevant topic, and does not simplify the complexity of the of the of, of the original historical source here, which is again, these insurgents are working towards a higher goal, a personal expense, uh, uh, civilians are gonna be at risk because of this. It's a terrible situation, and it's really, it's really, it's really powerful to me to see a game that engages with its topic on so many levels. So definitely resist. I think it's an excellent game. It's a powerful game and a very emotionally deep game, also.